So Paul, a long time ago when we were talking about the sun and elements, you know, hydrogen and helium, those are the, the, the beginning, most pristine things, and presumably that was what was it in the beginning. So do we see stars that are just these pristine, old hydrogen, little bit of helium stars and nothing else? Well, this has been a long challenge for a long time. We know that the Milky Way originally formed out of only hydrogen and helium because that's all the Big Bang produced. So here's a simulation of the Milky Way forming out of these hydrogen and helium clouds. And presumably it started off as a spinning disk of gas yep. and then at some point the first stars formed and these stars would have been only hydrogen and helium. Because that's all there was. There was nothing that's else right. that created. Now, they would have started burning other elements in their cores. Yep. Um, but, and some of them, I mean, if you remember this HR diagram, they would have presumably formed a range of masses. Yes. And the more massive ones would have very rapidly exploded. That's right. They would squirt the elements them. out. But remember that the sun's the last 10 billion years, and the Milky Way Galaxy is only about 10 billion years old. Okay. And maybe things a little less massive than the sun might last 20 billion years. Yeah, and we kind of know there's a bunch of things below the sun, so they should still be kicking around. And we know the there. universe is only 14 billion years old. See the cosmology course for details of where we get that from. <laughs> so, so, we have, so we have stars that could at least be older than 10 billion years. The sun we know is only about 10 billion years. So presumably there should be stars older than that that are still kicking around. Yes, yeah, so presumably this very first generation of stars that first formed the Milky Way, whatever it might be, 10 billion, 12 billion years ago, yeah. the massive ones weren't born then should have gone, yeah, sure. but the low mass one should still be here. That's right. And if we remember our structure of the sun, yeah. these low mass stars would have been burning up carbon, oxygen, things in the middle, but the outside, the stuff in the middle never gets to the outside, at least That's not right. until the very last phases of the star dying. So the outside should still have that original stuff i.e. hydrogen, helium, and nothing else. So if we look at the outside of a, some of these stars, presumably we should only see hydrogen and helium. We shouldn't see carbon, oxygen, iron. We shouldn't see any of that other stuff, just hydrogen and helium. And if we discovered this, it would be very exciting yeah. because we would have discovered some of that very first generation of stars in the Milky Way. And have we? Well... Not for lack of trying. <laughs> this is, again, a major research project here at ANU is trying to find so-called, they call them yeah. EMPs, for extremely metal-poor stars. Now, remember to just trying to make anything that's not hydrogen helium that's as right. a metal. So we're talking about extremely non-hydrogen and helium stuff, really. That's right. And for they've been, these, most stars, the sun has probably brought slightly more heavy elements than most stars in our okay. neighbourhood. Okay. Um, probably about three times more than the average of stars nearby. Yep. Probably because our sun's relatively young. Yep. You'd expect as time goes on that stars would generally have more and more heavy elements because more stars have produced them and exploded and squirted them out. Yep. So you get more and more generations of stars being born, brewing up heavy elements, squirting them out. Creating those, repeating the process. As time goes on, you're going to get more and more heavy elements. So a quest for stars with very few heavy elements is also a quest for the older stars. Because essentially it's, it's working backwards generationally almost, right? The, That's right. The, the, the stars that we see less of these heavy elements are going to be the older generation, and then we keep going and going until we reach the first generation. Yep, and no one has ever seen a star with no heavy elements, but they've okay. got pretty damn close. Okay. So here you can see a spectrum of a sun-like star, yep. and you can see it's got all these absorption lines from all these heavy elements. And what you can see is two extremely metal-poor stars, a fairly metal-poor and a ridiculously metal-poor star. And you can see that most of these absorption lines have gone away. That's right. And what's left is incredibly weak. So some of these stars have about a million times less, I think the record holder is just slightly more than a million times yes. less iron. Than the sun. Than the sun. Okay. Is, and of course the sun is still a very, very small fraction of iron in it. So, what you, so they're not the first generation, but they're close? Is that the idea? Yeah, so maybe these things are kind of like second generation. Okay. So maybe the first generation of stars formed, some of them died, squirted stuff out, and this cloud, this was created out of a gas cloud that included a little bit of enrichment yeah. from these very first other stars, but not much more. And then continue the process, yeah. But still, no one has ever seen totally metal-free stars. And I guess the, we have one of the problems, right, and this is what a lot of our friends deal with, is you have to make sure it's not there and that not just your telescope has missed it, right? That's right. But I think they're fairly confident that yep. if they were out there, we would see them. Um, I mean, they could still be vanishingly rare. Yep. They've surveyed you tens of thousands of stars, but if it's one in a hundred million or something, there'd still be a lot of them in the Milky Way. But just not enough to have 
been surveyed or detected. And there might not time. be any near us in our own part of the Milky Way at the moment. But it looks like they're either incredibly rare or don't exist at all. And that's a bit of a puzzle. Yeah, because how do then the star... How did the first stars come about then? What, what's going on? Well, remember, the problem was that normally when stars form, you form both high mass ones and low mass ones. And the yeah. high mass ones aren't a problem, they'll go away. Yeah, that's fine. But the low mass ones, the M dwarfs in particular, would hang around for nearly ever. But maybe they when these first stars formed, now giant molecular clouds are full of molecules. Yep. And I don't, by that, I don't generally mean hydrogen hydrogen bond, and this carbon, oxygen, methane, things like this. That's what makes them opaque, all the dust clouds. But these very first dark molecular clouds would have been transparent because they've only had hydrogen and helium. Yep. And that would mean they'd behave quite differently. So maybe then they didn't really form the low mass stars, is that it? And then only the big stars were formed? So this is what people are thinking. It's very hard to simulate. Yep. Um, no one really knows exactly why you get this range of masses in stars. But Maybe these first dark molecular clouds, because they were so different, because they only had hydrogen and helium, therefore they had no dust, they didn't have most of the molecules, and the molecules do most of the cooling, yep. and they also absorb all the ultraviolet light. So getting rid of the molecules, even though it's only 0.1% you know, by mass, these are crucially important for controlling how the radiation flows. And maybe if we get rid of all that, maybe it collapses just to form big stars. Okay. So it could be this first generation was only producing like 100 or 300 solar mass stars, which exploded as really weird hypernovae Then it's to your field That's of right. research. So we get some really weird explosions, and then those really weird explosions which create a molecular cloud give birth to what is the second generation of stars, but really... And the second or maybe the third, third yeah. now we've got a few heavy elements that's, right. that's going to make the giant molecular clouds behave more like the ones do today. And mm. so it's going to form some small stars as well as the big stars. Okay. So this is a lot of the research into these extremely yeah. metal poor stars is because we'd expect them to have really weird element abundances, which would be because they might have been enriched by only one hypernova. Yep. Whereas nowadays, the elements we've got have been through lots and lots of stars. It's an average over yeah. hundreds and thousands of supernovae and other types of dying stars. Where in this, these beginning ones, there have been maybe one, maybe two at best, but usually just one uh, enrichment period. And it would have been one of these very strange metal-free stars, uh, which probably acted weirdly. That's right. So very interesting, not very well understood at the moment, but it seems like that we can't see any first-generation stars we can see a handful of probably second generation stars and all the generations after that. And they do look weird. They have very small amounts of elements, but they do have some. Okay.